now have been stopped by the fact that as soon as you do do act in any way these days, you open yourself up to to criticism. So this integrity of I do what I believe in, but now what I believe in may not be what the um, the mainstream is is accepted. If you are scared to be yourself, like you said, integrity will be doing what you said you would do. But you also then just said doing what you like, sticking to what you believe in. I I but I. I'd say that's the real sign of integrity or not. And if you are a little bit scared or pressured into doing the opposite of what you genuinely believe in, you could say that's a that's a lack of integrity. And you you also said the crisis of identity at the start. You can go a layer deeper here as well as like well, how much of our identity is actually ours. Like how much are things that we believe in are actually our opinions and viewpoints or <laughs> We had an idea today to go talk about the topic of integrity. And maybe I should ask you this first. How would you define integrity? What does that word actually mean to you? Ooh, ooh. Mm. That is a good question. <laughs> Try not to go down a dictionary definition, but I don't know what the dictionary definition of. Someone to have integrity, I think, is doing the... It's speaking with honesty and validity. So not just saying the honest thing, but having the necessary tools, skills, know-how, whatever it is to back it up at the same time. Mm. I always look at it as like integrity in life is doing what you say you're going to do. Yeah. Mm. And I think integrity online is um, more like, what was the, what's the word I was going to use? Yeah, doing what you say you're going to do. And online, it's almost like having the like the intentions that you are trying to get across with a message are the intentions that are coming across with a message. Yeah. So, and we, we and I, I think the question I was I was going to ask you before we came on air that I said that I've got something where I want to start this episode. Do you think in the last few years, with the pandemic, with the levels of comfort, with the how accessible everything is in life? Do you think we're in a bit of an integrity crisis in the world right now? I think it's certainly highlighted people's natural lack of integrity. Hmm. Because before there were so many ways to hide it. A, as the, as the online space increases and people put themselves out there more, we see who has integrity and who doesn't. In terms of like your local community, we saw, oh my God, like some, some horrible things happening during the pandemic. Not just what people were physically doing, but in terms of how they were talking about other people behind their backs, in terms of saying one thing and doing another, it's we, we've definitely got we, we've covered this before. We've got a crisis of identity, and there's a crisis of conscious going on as well. Like people are very much out out for themselves, and there's some merit to that. You've got to look after yourself first, of course, you have. But in terms of those two things together, lack of integrity, lack of consciousness, uh, sorry, lack of identity, lack of consciousness, there's going to be a lack of integrity through it as well. In this last couple of weeks alone, it's just really, really hit me how many times I'm seeing online videos of someone getting attacked, videos of someone that's been attacked and they're just lying in the street, thing, things happening with animals, all sorts of stuff, and no one's stepping in, but multiple people are filming it. Now, of course, you've got the argument, you've got the argument that if you get involved, chances are something will happen to you as well. Sure, I get that. Fair enough. But standing there and filming it, what fucking good does that do? Apart from give you the validation, you've been the person that filmed it. It's how many times these clips go on Twitter and you see news agencies underneath. Hi, so-and-so, can we use your thing in our report? We'll give you full credit, stuff like that. And all, yeah, of course, yeah, that's great. Man, the dopamine hits those people must be getting at that moment in time. Even though they've just stood and filmed something horrific with no, no push to help whatsoever, how that sits with their conscious, I don't know. And I think it doesn't sit in their conscious because they've got no integrity. So I think you could say we've got an integrity crisis, but it's not as, not as in your face because it's more of an under-murmuring, like you don't know what someone's actions are going to be until they're in a situation where those actions might be needed whether they do them or not. Hmm. Do, do you think, just to play devil's advocate on that though, with the, mm. like you stepping in and 
solving an, an issue there and then might solve that issue, but it wouldn't necessarily highlight the bigger issue at play. We'll no. use um, police brutality in America, right? Sure. So people filming police brutality in America would be would highlight instantly the issues that are going on institutionally, potentially, and I'm, I, I'm not, I don't know enough to, to claim whether there's institutional racism in the police or not, but we are now able to highlight that instantaneously. So there's now these people are held accountable at the bigger picture. Whereas if I stepped in and stopped that moment, while that would save that moment, mm. that might then just be brushed under the carpet and no change is actually made. Mm. Yeah. Totally. It's, it's, <laughs> it, it's, man, it's what makes the headlines as well, right? What causes more righteous indignation? It's obviously police brutality and a negative consequence of that brutality rather than just using a tag word rather than the heroic efforts of someone that stopped that, that put a stop to that. Hmm. For example, not, not long after George Floyd, there was not a major, major case, but it made, it, it did the rounds on social media of the police had taken this guy down and they had the knee on this guy and it was just that little bit too close to the neck and you see this copper next to him give him a tap to take his knee off. Not because it's necessarily going to kill the guy, but because they know they're being watched, they're being filmed, they're going to be criticised, all this stuff. But no one makes a hero out. Like, for all we know, that could have killed the guy. But no one makes a hero mm. out of that copper. No one makes a hero out of that. It just goes back to the original question of what they should or shouldn't be doing. Um, but yeah, it's, it's tough, right? You, ne you never... Everyone likes to think what they would do in a certain situation. But no one really knows unless they've been in that situation before. So how many people who have never been in a fight, maybe never even done a martial art or anything like that, would rate themselves to go into a fight? This is where I've had to stop myself many, many times from letting my anger and my rage talk before, my, before any sort of sense, common sense makes a decision. Because you never know what's going to happen on the other side, right? But at the same time, I'd like to think that if someone was genuinely in trouble, I'd do what I could to help. Hmm. I like to think that. But who knows at the time? I might run away screaming like a little girl. But I know for a fact I would not get my phone out and fucking film it. And going back directly onto the integrity question as well, like I wonder how many people that maybe are confident that would go in and help out but now I've been stopped by the fact that as soon as you do do act in any way these days, yeah. you open yourself up to to criticism. So this integrity yeah. of I do what I believe in, but now what I believe in may not be what the um, the mainstream is is accepted. Yeah. So in this thing that we got people are now being disingenuous because they're more worried about the backlash of being genuous. Like you know, yeah. we is genuous a word, but we we spoke before about the um, the not all men movement right and I'm not making this a, a feminist thing but i made that point of like how many guys generally want to help out with this stuff mm. but they've been slammed by women when they have done when when they have been supportive so they're now they're like well i don't I, I'm, I'm hesitant to now jump in the ring and throw my hat in the ring because i feel like i'm gonna be slapped slapped for it mm. And yeah. so people now are scared, and not just on that topic, but I think now in, in a lot of things, people are scared to be themselves because of the backlash they may get. That's the problem. This is where you could take it even deeper. If you are scared to be yourself, like you said, integrity will be doing what you said you would do. But you also then just said doing what you like, sticking to what you believe in. I, I, I'd say that's the real sign of integrity or not. And if you are a little bit scared or pressured, into doing the opposite of what you genuinely believe in, you could say that's a that's a lack of integrity. Think about it. Mm. I mean, it calls yeah. people out, and it calls myself out, it calls all of us out, because are we really acting on what we believe, or are we being conditioned by society and culture and news and murmurings of what other people might be thinking to do something that just fits that narrative so we don't kick up fuss, so we don't have tons of attention on us? So we don't mm. upset people at the same time. If it goes against what you actually believe. And you, you also said the crisis of identity at the start. You can go a layer deeper here as well. as like, well, how much of our identity is actually ours? Like True. how much are things Very that well. we believe in are actually our opinions and viewpoints or yeah. what has been pushed onto us over the last, in my case, 32 years of life. Like, mm. 
are my opinions mine or are my opinions the formulation of, of what I've been told yeah. and my algorithms and all the all these other things but I do I do think I do think sort of like full circling a little bit back to fitness I do think this is this is becoming a bigger issue and and I, I've said this before like like just you know being an old man essentially now and doing this for 13 years you you see phases of of the sort of kind of clientele you get and then maybe this is a Hong Kong thing like like no disrespect to anyone here in Hong Kong there's some people that are um have incredible work ethics that I know and but there, it, it's it's a it's a it's a follower culture it's not a critical thinking culture it is a place where um if you walk longer than 10 minutes it's a journey it's a place where fast food is more you know fast than anywhere else the kitchens aren't existent but I, I still see it in the online game as well that a lot of people have big like big talk and this has always been the case for people have big talk in their own act but i find now that the, the gap between talk and action is is larger than ever mm-hmm. i think now there are you you it has to be where it was always like a 50 50 relationship between coach and client. Now I think it's sort of like 80, 10, like the coach is literally everything bar putting the food in your mouth mm. to, to get you to act like, and I, I try to wonder where this has come from. Is this an integrity thing because people are more comfortable? Is it because potentially now that we, we are more stressed and sleep deprived than ever making our actions harder is it because gut issues are now becoming more apparent which causes all sorts of issues in terms of cravings like i don't know what it is mm. but it's it's presenting in this sort of lack of integrity in terms of i said i'm going to do this and in 20 minutes i'm going to go back on that word <laughs> true and it, it... We'll, get, we'll keep it in the fitness realm. It's especially this this lack of identity is people have kind of forgotten what a personal trainer is or a coach or whatever, however you want to label it and what we're meant to do and what people actually need. And when you've got all these different influences that form your opinions and your behaviours and essentially your identity, and if that has been informed by too many external influences, the perception of who you are and what you should be doing becomes skewed as well. And we see this with PTs and coaches that it's all about them rather than about their client. Mm. And they are definitely very, very worried about what other people think of them, but more so they're worried about what other PTs think of them. And if you look at this big, big trend, and I'm pretty sure I may have done it at some point as well, of PTs that are filming their own workouts and there's aggressive motivational quotes over the top of them and... (laughs) you know, in, intense music and things like that, like it is a Hollywood blockbuster for their fucking four sets of 10 on a hack squat. Come on, man. Come on. Like, <laughs> who are you I'm, fooling uh, with? I, but you're I've got a quote. Because, because of the perception. Got a, I'm going to have a quote of an old client of mine, a guy called Jack, um, if I can actually find his post. Um, oh, annoyingly now. But he put like a literally one of those motivational quote things of just like insert motivational quote here to get you fired up and then do nothing. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> God, yeah. mm. But it, but, it, but it is right though. It goes back to the thing we've talked about for a long time, you know, for a number of episodes for terms of personal trainers in terms of marketing. It's, it's wishy-washy. It's not solutions. It's motivational quotes. It's fired up music. It's, mm. it's, Here's the one that gets me, and I know we're going off the integrity thing slightly, but this one really gets me in terms of, yes, I get it. We've got to play the Instagram game. Maybe I should play it more, but as an unbelievable waste of time, fitness business mentors, when you scroll down their page, you don't see anything about client results or training or nutrition, but what you will often see now is this is, this is almost going to be trending audio. Mm. Who gives a fuck if I have foot loose on my video or – the Jaws theme tune, like it does not change the value and the content of my post. Yeah, trending audio. What, whatever happened to just using the music that you like? That's what I fucking do. I don't care if it's trending or not. Jesus. Um, but it, it, bringing it back to the integrity thing, you, it's, we'd be naive to think that there's no lack of integrity in the fitness industry because there's lack of integrity in almost every major industry. Financial industry, Jesus Christ. The political sphere, which you could call an industry, 
pharmaceutical and medical, there's loads of instances of lack of integrity in there. So why would the fitness industry be any different? Well, of course it's not. You get a certain amount of percentage of people, certain percentage of people in, of course, there's going to be eventually everything's going to be watered down. There's going to be lack of integrity. There's going to be people only in it for themselves, people in it for the wrong reasons, people just doing the quick fix, um, or charging a ton of money just to make money and then they bail out later down the line or they become a business mentor. There's, of course, there's a lack of integrity. And the problem is you kind of have to get stung a couple of times to really see it, right? Things we were talking about just before we came on air about certain mad claims about things that you watch it and eventually you find out, like like you said, it's just a, <laughs> just like chili in a flipping capsule or something like that. But we know... Well, well for people that don't nothing. know what we're talking yeah. about here... Yeah, yeah. I, I spent I, sp- I spent I spent 30 40 minutes of my life a few years ago actually watching one of those V-shred lead magnets on the website not because I bought into V-shred I, I really didn't guys please do not say so in the comments but I I just wanted to know what the fuck was this miracle supplements that Harvard scientists don't want you to know because of course if they're going to be studying this thing they want absolutely no profit from it you know like you know they just want to keep it in their own little lab just so they can be shredded in the lab coats <laughs> But it was 30, 40 minutes of my life to find out about capsicum. Get it back. Like, get it back. Mm. yeah, like absol- absolutely mnemonic and ridiculous. And mm. like, I did a thing recently, a, like, a video recently talking about, well, one of the points I made was about business coaches. And so you talked about being stung, right? I think it's worse because now everyone, the ability to lie and paint your life in a much better way is easier than ever. So business coaches make talk about how important customer service is and daily support and making sure your onboarding is fantastic and all this stuff. And like they make coaches feel really bad when they forget to reply to a client, which granted shouldn't you do, you shouldn't do all the time, but things happen, right? Life happens yeah. and learn from it, fix it, move on. But I have been to these business coaches that bang on about customer service and daily support and I never got a login to their, their membership portal. I had to chase them three or four times. I had to fight for a call. When I got on a call, it took me about an hour, like me about seven or eight days and about four messages to get the recording that I asked for back. Um, the whole system changed when I was on it, and like it wasn't what I bought. You know, it's, and, and, and this is someone quite prolific on, on social media in terms of business coaching who just who talks about how, how like his team are amazing and we look after everybody. And I'm like, no, you don't. No, no, you don't. And and th- this is where the lack of integrity, I think, really gets me. Because while it's bad that you're stung in terms of expecting a service and not getting a service, but it's having a knock-on effect of you trying to tell people how to run their business when you're not running your own business like that. Yeah. The, the issue with these biz mentors, they really seem to... And I get it. So, same with PTs as well. They seem to want to build this biz thing up and then step away from it as quickly as they can make the mad claims online do a few live calls do a few podcast appearances and then just hire a ton of virtual assistants to do the work they step back but continue with the occasional podcast appearance i want to use an example with an old client of mine who's just stepped away from his construction injury injury just (laughs) industry his, (laughs) his, uh, his company that he's been building up for 20 years he's built it up over a long, long period of time, he has always been involved. He's been like, like way, way more involved than any CEO probably should be. And 20 years later, he's now taken the step back and letting you know the people just underneath him doing, do the work that they're meant to do. But everyone, like these, these biz mentors, want to see themselves as some sort of CEO of some company and take a step back too soon because they're getting the money coming in from these poor guys that think they're going to constantly make... 10 to 20 grand a month because they saw the screenshot of one coach who did it in one month and probably never did 10k for the rest of the month or anything like that it's it's worrying right but again like i think that there is a certain level of education that comes from being educated and continuing your education there's a certain level of education that comes from being stung as well how many people get stung multiple times and still don't see the source that they keep going to see this with perpetual dieters how many clients over the years? What'd you say? Thirteen years, yeah. That you've been, mm, yeah, yeah, in the yeah. Industry. How many people 
I've tried everything and they literally have tried everything, which is the, the issue when you try everything, nothing works. They've done these pills, they've done that diet, they've done low carb, they've done low fat, they've done a branded diet group, they've done all sorts of stuff. But they still haven't learned that one that none of those things are working for them. They still ask questions about it. They still think, well, I did, I did keto in this program, and it, I, I, I dropped like three kilos. Should we do that as well? And some people just never learn, unfortunately, no matter how, how many times they get hit. There's a couple it's of important so- things you said in that, right? Like the first one is obviously like the business mentors saying that their mm-hmm. their client made ten grand, and and I and I'm not I'm going to put a caveat to this because I'm not saying upfront payments are a bad thing, right? Like I, I'm really not because I do think like upfront payments. Um, like Steve McGrath had a great video on this, and he was saying like the good benefits of doing upfront payments is that you like if you have a nasty tax bill or you move or someone gets sick yeah. or whatever reason, right? If you're taking a few upfront payments, you've you've always got a bit of money in the bank. You know you can always make a bit of money if you if you're struggling. Yeah. But a lot of coaches are now doing these upfront payments thing, not because of those reasons, but because of like they want to say someone's got ten grand in the bank this month. But actually, what they have have is they've signed three clients up to 12 months programs. So if you take that 10 grand and then split it by 12, it doesn't look anywhere near as impressive. And this is the thing. It's not mentioned. There's no, and that's the lack of integrity here. It's fooling you into thinking something's true when this isn't true. And yeah. in the same way, I think I'm not saying you should put caveats up. Like, I'm not going to put every result up and say, oh, by the way, this person has trained for 30 years. Um, this person was doing this. This person was doing that. This person had, like, but on the flip side of this, if it's if, it, if you're g- generally being disingenuous, there should be a little bit of like, look, this, my, this client made 15 grand in January by selling his mentorship program at a grand a piece. Like, exactly. that's still an impressive stat. Exactly. But like it's 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 yeah. not it's not it's not deliberately misleading, yeah. Yeah. and that's that's where I sort of draw the line. I get there's a bit of playing the game. I get you got to like sensationalize headlines um, to get people's attention, but there's a fine line between sensationalizing and me- like being sort of a, lying essentially about mm. what actually has happened with that client. Yeah. Um, and the thing about being stung in terms of going back to the integrity with the clients thing is how many, like you said, you, we've all seen it, right? The amount of clients that said they've done everything, but how many of those clients have actually done everything? Like you said, they've yeah. actually done everything, but yeah. they have, they have bought yeah. the programs, but how many of them have done them consistently? Yeah. How many of them have exact going back to exactly the doing what you said you were going to do. I bought the keto program, but you didn't. You did it for four days and then a three day weekend, then you did it for a day, and then you had a like three or four days off, and then, then you had yeah. your birthday, and then you went to Thailand. And and then it goes, Oh, it didn't work. Yeah. Well, how many clients, and this is one for the online coaches in this, how many of your clients, we all and it's fine, we all have clients that haven't moved in months because it's not priority number one. And that's that's fine. Everyone's different. Yeah. But how many of your clients are still put giving you the facade that I'm doing everything you're telling me. I'm only eating 1100 calories and I'm not losing a pound, but yet I've stayed for 24 months and rolling. So I'm like, if you've, if, if you were generally as on it, as you said you were, and as determined to lose weight as you said you were, and it were you were on 1100 calories, not losing weight, you would have left because like, well, this is obviously isn't working. I'm yeah. going to do something else. But if your clients rolling on as adamant, like, well, if they would, if this was true, they think you're a shit coach. And if they're staying, they obviously don't, which makes them think they're not sticking to it as much as you say. But that is the line. I've got to tell my and personal trainer I'm sticking to 400 calories a day. Yeah. And that's, that's their lack of integrity because they're worried about mm. how they're going to be perceived. Which, I'm, you know, this lack of integrity, we're not, we're not saying everyone's a – we're not calling everyone a C-word, you know. And, 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 not, not, and not also – I'm not even saying necessarily this lack of integrity. As I said earlier on, I'm looking for the reasons why here. Some people, it's, it is, is pure laziness and excuse making. Yeah. But we, we, like, the increase in this, not, we haven't got, well, maybe we have, maybe we could talk about the Gen Z argument, but like, I don't think we've all gotten more lazy and more entitled. I think there's element, is it gut health? Is it ease of portion sizes? Is it emotional issues? Is it higher stress? Is it less sleep? I think there are reasons for this. It's presenting as lack of integrity. Because it sometimes can come across quite offensive and say, you don't have any integrity. But essentially, your actions are suggesting that. 
whether that is true for you personally and mentally and the way you feel about yourself, yeah. that, that's a different story. Because we've all done it. Like I, I would like to consider myself someone who has relatively high integrity. But there are times where I say, I'm going to do something, and I haven't. And, mm. But it's, the question is, why? Mm. Yeah, why is that? What it. Why is that? Why, why do we do anything that we do? Man, this this could go so deep, and it shouldn't. But <laughs> you could you could bring in the argument of free will and all and all sorts of stuff. But I think it's more related to we do worry more about what other people think of us than anyone actually lets on. We love to say, "I don't give a fuck what anyone thinks." That's never. I want you to. I want you to. Maybe not completely, but I kind of want you to go down that rubber hole a bit. In terms of when you say free will, I'm assuming you're going down determinism. Maybe. <laughs> but do we? But do we? Do you believe in free will? Do you think this is a thing, or do you think we, do you think our atoms are designed to do what they're supposed to do, and we we are we are along for the ride without knowing it? Sam Harris broke my brain on the concept of free will, and it's one of the greatest but most confusing and conflicting books that I've ever read. And every any time he does a podcast on it, I jump back on there, and some of his views have changed a little bit on it. But man, that that geezer broke my brain with this idea. But it's not necessarily is there a predetermined fate as in it's already written in the cosmos and we're just following along or necessarily is he pushing the idea that we're a pre-programmed computer simulation, but I'm pushing that idea. It's more to do with do things make our decisions for us automatically in terms of environmental stimuli, in terms of the chemical reactions that happen inside of the brain and the body are those the things that are actually driving our, our, actions and behaviors rather than this thing that we call consciousness that we think is our identity and driving our behaviors and actions at the same time i'm butchering that explanation but like i say it's a big old fucking book in a big have old you, concept um, well. do you, have you ever watch minefield from vsauce no, no so the so vsauce is a youtube channel definitely worth watching about sciencey yeah. stuff it's not it's not fitness stuff necessarily but it's like did the past exist uh our chairs are real <sighs> Uh, like really interesting stuff, right? Oh, um, questions just dumb me in. Jeez. Yeah, like, and one of the things mm. he did, talked about, he did an episode, he did a TV series for YouTube Premium called Minefield, mm. and he talked about free will in one of those episodes. And he had basically a, um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to butcher this, but they were attached to this sort of machine, and they were basically did like they have these two buttons, and they basically had to decide which button is going. They have to press it when the lights on, and the machine was predicting what they were going to do before they did it. Mm. Like it learned what they were going to do because it strapped up to their, it was strapped up to their brain. It wasn't like an AI learning tool. Yeah. It was strapped to their brain. Yeah. So their brain knew the decision that that person was going to make before they'd made the decision which button to press, there's, there's which means the machine was always that. beating them. Yeah, there's something about that in Sam Harris's book about whatever study it was where there were electrical impulses in the brain happening before the conscious decision was made, which almost suggests... Something's programmed there. <laughs> Not in a computer simulation way, but something's happening before it reaches your conscious thought. And in some ways, we know that exists already, right? In terms of the fight or flight, flight response. You walk out into the road in a car, suddenly you realise a car's two metres away. Okay, let's give it 10 metres, something like that, but it's fast. How much time have you got to think consciously, or is your body already like reacting? You're either standing there and getting hit, or you're moving out of the way. You don't necessarily stand there and go, what should I do? in terms of actual conscious thought, you know? And it, we, we see this more with, um, in terms of eating habits as well. How many people have already gone into Tesco and bought the crisps and the sweets and everything and half, half eaten them before they realise, oh shit, what am I doing? It's just subconscious habit and behaviour. Now, obviously, in terms of running out of the way of the car, hopefully that's not a habit that you've picked up over time to, 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 to do or not. Um, if it is, I'd seek help quick. Um, but yeah, obviously there are certain responses in our body that have to that have to override our conscious thought in order to survive. But how much, what, how many areas of our life does it actually does it actually have control yeah. over? The, the analogy I really like, I, I, and, I, and, I'm, and the more I, I'm on this episode, um, and this episode we'll go into it more in a second. Um, but the more I do these shows, the more I come across like a Chris Williamson fanboy. Um, I, I promise you, there's not pictures of him here. And I promise you that I, I'm, you know, I'm not sending I'm, things to his house. I'm but, devastated that I couldn't get tickets to his live show. Devastated. But, yeah. When is, where is his lives? 
Uh, this is uh, later in the year he's done London. I think he's just announced another London date, but that's going to sell us so quick as well. Of course it is. Of course it is. Because we're all Chris yeah. Williams and fanboys at the end of the day. Of course we are. <laughs> but I don't know if it's him or for one of his guests, but I do like the, the analogy that I heard on his show about, like, like if you're, you are like somebody riding an elephant. So, oh, like, yeah, the ant, the, ant, the ant and the elephant. Yeah, so like, if 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 you're if you're riding an elephant, you are technically driving this elephant. Like, you have free will. You have the ability to steer the elephant. But if the elephant doesn't want to do what you want to do, you are absolutely powerful, powerless. Mm. The elephant is in control, but it might let you go where it wants you to go. And I think the reason why I like this analogy is because it's like. Our conscious actions over time have led to the way we see the world, the way we believe in the world, the way we make decisions. I, I don't quite buy into the determinism theory in the sense of, you know, I, I think if, if it was true and everyone had this sort of like laid out path that, that was going to go, you're always going to make the decisions before you made them and that's going to affect the path of your life. I don't think we'd see these big differences in, in behaviours from generation to generation. Mm. We wouldn't have the millennial versus Gen Z argument. Right, because there wouldn't be anything that, um, like when we're born, those Gen Z people aren't going to all of a sudden have a completely different set of code to the people before them. Um, but we are seeing these things with the advent of social media and the way people live their lives, a change in dynamics and people's free will and people's choices. If we look at the, without going down that wormhole necessarily, when we look at the trans debate, how many more people are coming out as transsexual, whether that was the case, maybe more people just didn't publicize it, I don't know. But there are more people making different choices, right? Mm. So I don't necessarily believe in that theory, but I like the elephant theory because it thinks like, yeah, we are in control of this, but let's say for sake of argument, you have a H. pylori, candida overgrowth. You have something really going wrong in your gut. This will affect your anxiety, depression, ADHD. Um, this will affect all sorts of mental things, your cravings, your hunger, your food choices. And you are not, you're in control of that, but you're not in direct control. Of that. I can't go, I'm not going to have candida tomorrow. It's mm. choices you've made for the last 20 years, and now it's going to take some work to undo in the same way that sleep deprivation. You know, again, another thing I got from Chris Williamson's like 800,000 subscriber episode, he was talking about his anxiety, depression in his 20s. And I, I teach sleep in my mentorship. I understand it. But I realized, like, oh, my God, the last hard year of my life is probably more sleep deprivation than actually some of the challenges that I was perceiving. Yeah. And it was only when he said it that way, I'm like, oh, Oh shit! I need to take this more seriously. So, I do think there are definitely things that influence our behaviour. Like, our free will is is a hundred percent true, but there's a lot of stuff you have to do before it is actually true. Before you are in control. I don't think I'm in control now. I think I will be. <laughs> but I've got yeah. work to do. Yeah, yeah. Of course, we've always got work to do. We've always got work to do. As soon as you stop doing the work, you give up your free will. You give up your control. And you hand it into the reins of something else. So your actions, your values always have to be aligned with whatever it is that you want in your life. And as soon as they're misaligned with that, you feel you don't feel right. Okay, you might get comfortable, but then something else comes along. Whether that is a health issue, whether that is, I don't know, you get blindsided by redundancy or the pandemic really highlights what your financial situation was like. Because it's so easy to run on autopilot and it's so easy to just get comfortable and think we're doing the right things. But again, all it takes is one thing for us to realize, oh, shit, what have I been doing for the last 10 years or 20 years or longer without realizing how many clients, the simplest conversation of what's your sleep like at the moment when they first start? Oh, it's terrible. I start till midnight. I'm on my phone. I'm up early. Like five has got to get the kids ready for school. No wonder you're out of shape. No wonder you feel low energy. No wonder you feel horrific. Take the diet out of the equation for a second. No wonder you feel like shit if you're not sleeping. Now, mm. no wonder that you're overeating. No wonder that your autopilot response is to just eat everything on the go that's hyper palatable and hyper caloric because you've not had any flipping sleep. If we can fix that, suddenly we've got an easier chance of fixing everything else as well. But if you then try and diet and fix your habits without fixing that sleep, the root cause, well, you've got a much, much tougher road ahead. I'm not saying it's impossible. You've got a much tougher journey ahead of you. So we've got to obviously always look at the bigger picture as well. When it goes back to that integrity argument is don't worry too much about what other people are thinking. How do you feel about what you're doing? 
Like if you say if you say you want to lose weight and you say you want to get in the best shape of your life and you're currently in a horrific shape, which is linked to your lack of sleep and you're running on caffeine all the time and you're staying up till one a.m. on your phone just to find a bit of me time, which is not me time at the slightest. It's are you are you, are you doing the actions that are going to actually help you change, or are you happy to just sit in autopilot and lie to yourself, which is even worse. Like lie to your coach, cool, but if you're lying to yourself, Jesus. That's, that's well, going to come back to bite you when you ask. That's the thing, and I think that's where maybe the solution. To this is more people going into therapy or journaling or something. Yeah. But I think a lot of this will be fixed by people owning their priorities. Like mm. everyone has this idea that they can do everything, that they're superheroes, and, I, and, and it just doesn't work. Like, have you ever heard of the four burner theory? So the four burner theory is going to be four gas hops, right? And yeah. you essentially you can only, unless you want a huge gas bill, run these uh, these hobs on at full power. So if you're going to turn one hob up, let's say that's your business hob, then you have to pull the other hobs down. Otherwise, there's not going to be enough gas for the business hob. Right? So you can have a couple sim like maybe you have one simmering away and one on full blast, but mm. a couple of them have to be pretty much low. And people try and go, well, I can add um, a six pack habit onto my existing like 70 hour week business and yeah. my, you know, four kids and family and you know, whatever else that I'm doing and my marathon that I want to run in, in, in July. And it, I think if people own their priorities and like, it's okay if, if, if your gym isn't a priority right now or own it, it's okay if your business is a priority for number one, or it's not a priority number one, but for pull one up, you have to pull one down. It doesn't mean give up your business. Yeah. It just means go from what is the bare minimum you need to do to get by and make money and keep it, keep it growing to what is all the extra work? And going through sort of like sprints in, in every facet of life and then times to pull back, like high intensity interval training for your life, essentially. I think that would solve a lot of issues because I, I see it more and more, especially with mentees now looking at their clients, even some of mine, there's more people like almost creating a false sense of security. I see more people going, ah, I don't want to focus on diet. Let's just, let's just go into the gym and do strength. I'm like, you've come to a body composition gym. Like, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm not saying yeah, that yeah, you, you, yeah. you should, if you want to focus on strength and not focus on diet, that's cool. But you understand, right, that you came in here to lose weight and in two weeks you changed your mind. That doesn't happen. What that re realistically means is you realized it was hard work. Mm. And instead of leaning into it and understanding that's what hard feels like, stealing from Alex or Mosey, like, you, you immediately back off, off that discomfort. And then you realize it's like, well, if you not focus on nutrition, that strength's not going to happen either. Mm. And it's almost that sort of thing was like, okay, I don't want to do that because that's hard. But if I just keep getting stronger, then maybe it'll all just come together in the end. And I think people aren't realizing that 30 years will go by and you go, oh my God, I missed my chance. Mm. Yeah. Totally. I had, I had this amazing client. I oh, was awesome. I miss him so much. He was so funny. Proper old school. Not not right wing, but conservative American values. He was amazing. He was a sixty year old geezer that <laughs> came to lose weight, dropped ten kilos, fantastic, but then caught the bug of heavy benching and what he used to do when he was younger and playing American football and stuff like that and his wrestling and and eventually it just became he just gave up on the diet. But he loved training heavy and i love that he loved training heavy and i love taking him through stuff and but he also kind of looked at him and go man like there's like he's in his 60s now and his, the weight's not as good as it could be this could bite him bite him in the ass later down the line so i'd always try and bring it back to diet and he would eat decently enough but there'd be extra snacks there'd be alcohol with business deals and stuff like that and he was high up in his industry and he was selling his business later down the line all sorts of stress on top as well and it eventually got to the point where I'm like, I'm just going to be adding more stress to his life. He's, it's not like he's coming in going, I want to lose weight. And we heavy bench and he stress eats and never sleeps and things like that. He would come in going, I just need this as stress relief. I need to kind of walk out. I need to walk out of the gym having enjoyed myself. So cool. I have to, I have to change the priorities with him. Let's just make sure he has fun and let him lift heavy. Make sure he doesn't die. Some technique was a little bit ropey. And he would love it every single session. Absolutely love it. The 60-year-old American geezer coming in, dry scooping creatine, 
if I told well, him not to. Well, well that's the that, but the difference with this guy, right, is because he owns his priorities. Yeah, like, that's like, like we all do unhealthy things, mm. like mm. wrestling, American football, um, getting fat, you know, high stress, mm. not sleeping. Like we, we all have unhealthy habits. Every single one of us does. No one's perfect. Yeah. But if you own that unhealthy habit and maybe you decide, okay, I'm going to get back into being healthy, maybe down the line, or maybe I just don't give a fuck. Mm. That is totally cool. And yeah. I'm, always, I'm always a firm believer in my clients. Like, I don't want to babysit you. So if, if, if you generally just don't want to focus on this, that's cool. But what you've got to understand is this will not happen for you unless you do. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and then if you generally go, do you know what? I'm not, a father, I'm not a bother. I quite like being a few pounds of away. I don't really mind. That's cool. Like, I, 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 I'm, I'm happy because then, then, then we're not, like, fighting. We're not adding stress into each other's lives. We're just sort of there going, right, let's focus on what top priority is. How do you make your work better? How do you make your gym sessions better? But it's it's when it's when people will get to the end of a program and like be like, well, why haven't I lost weight? Or oh, I wish I was leaner. Or moan about their body weight. I'm like, well, you've not done any of the actions that you said you were going to do. Like I remember I had a client in 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 London who, and again, I, I appreciate this actually could probably benefit his weight loss um, rather than hinder it. But he used to literally as he left the door of the gym, light up a cigarette. <laughs> now that would actually curb his appetite. I'm not necessarily yeah, yeah, against exactly. it per se, yeah. mm. but it, it's the mentality. It's like mm. you, you did something good for your health and within seconds, not even yeah. minutes, within mm. seconds, the cigarette is lit. Like your motivation lasted that long. Like, where can we go with this? Yeah. I had a client recently saying like, trying to say to me, he's like, he wants to find a solution for his nutrition, but um, he, didn't, he didn't want to cook, didn't like the food prep company and shaking a shaker bottle was too much effort. I'm like, well, what do you want me to do? Do you like, I do you want me to become a surgeon? Like, what's my alternative here? Because at some point, you're going to have to do some of this. Yeah. And that's that's we're going back to like an initial point of in terms of integrity. That's what I think is changing. I think we are now so far away from anything being that hard that. It's actually such a hard sell to say, like, you want this, but you know this isn't going to be like putting your favorite show on Netflix and ordering delivery, right? Like, you get that, right? Mm. And I think people don't. That, 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 that's it, right? It's not that hard. The biggest battle you've got is not the method. It's your current habits and beliefs mm. that are keeping you in the comfort that you're actually dis discomfortable. Fucking hell, Robert. That you're actually uncomfortable in. That's your biggest battle. That's where the hard work is. The rest is kind of easy. It's not impossible to get 30 grams of protein with every meal. It's not impossible to fill half your plate with veg. Not hard to drink three litres of water today uh, in a day. But how many excuses have I heard about why someone can't drink three litres of water a day? I'll be running to the toilet every 10 minutes. All right, fucking run to the toilets every 10 minutes. We get extra steps in. <laughs> you got 10K steps. It's too hard to get 10K steps. Oh, it's cold. It's raining. Bruv, come on, you've got waterproof clothes. And even if you haven't, what's the worst thing that can happen? You're not going to die from going out for an hour to walk in the fucking rain. I, I hear so many excuses for steps. Yeah. And it's the same people that will wait for taxis to drive to their feet rather than walking down the road to get the taxi. <laughs> and it's just, it, 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 and it's, and I, I've, I've, so, I've, I, I've, uh. I've had people that moan about steps and they do their set in the gym and they immediately uh. sit down on a bench. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. we have a track. <laughs> Walk now. How many people I've grabbed? Come on, let's go. Like, <laughs> get my like, steps in and all. Yeah, like I'm, I'm, I'm. That's the thing that boggles my mind is that, and, and I and I get it. But people aren't, aren't aren't intuitive to find solutions. In the same way that if I was in a, if I was a new invest, if they put me in their investment bank, I wouldn't see investment opportunities like they would spot investment opportunities. Sure. Um, I, and so I, like I, I, I'm, I don't want to sound unempathetic. I have total empathy. And I will help people find solutions. Mm. But I think the two things that are, are becoming more apparent is people are scared of more scared of accountability, so than ever before. So less mm. people are coming to you with the problems. Mm. So you ask them, "Hey, I want, could you drop me a message with this on Friday? I want to help you over the weekend." And they just will just ghost you until Monday, and then, "Oh yeah, I overate." That is yeah. more of a frequent thing than ever before. Yeah. And also, like, like almost the excuses of it. It's like, like if you explain your problems. I will help you to the eighth degree, but it's, it's now it's people 
it's less than awareness of it, but people knowing knowing their stuff is bullshit, but saying it anyway. I was like, yeah. what? Who, who, are you, who are you helping with this? Mm. So bringing this back to the media and the initial inspiration for this podcast, right? Going back to integrity. And we're going to pair Mr. Williamson, who we both like, and Mr. Bartlett, who I, I'll put a big caveat, who I also like. So I, I, I will put this because I, I, I've been a big fan of the diary of a CEO for a very long time. I think Stephen Barlett asks very good questions. I think he's a very good listener. I think his podcast, he gets phenomenal guests. And I mean, I include people like Tim yeah. Spector in this. The problem with Tim Spector was the clickbaitiness of the, of the message, not the problem with the gut health message. I had someone, my friend today, who's going down the functional medicine route quite heavily, said to me, it was a missed opportunity to have a yeah. genuine conversation about gut health. And instead, it became an anti-calorie message. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to integrity, and you compare those two podcasts, what are your thoughts recently? <laughs> recently? Well, <laughs> it's tricky because I'm going to reveal something in a second that, that actually pissed me off. Um, but I guess it comes down to perception, right? I look at the caliber of guests that Chris Williamson gets on, the quality of questions that he asks how he allows people to talk and how he comes across himself in interviews as well like when he uh, when he has when he's the guest rather than the interviewer and obviously he ticks a lot of my boxes because he talks about areas that i'm interested in he talks mm -hmm. to people i like and i follow already he gets interested in new guests that can end up forming parts of my view as well I was later to the game with Stephen Bartlett and round about the time I started listening to Stephen Bartlett, there was more of the clickbaity stuff that I didn't like. And I saw, I, I saw, I'll hold my hands up and say, my view has been skewed by that. Okay. Mm. So if you were to say, who's the more integral person? Well, I would put my hand up and say, well, of course it's Chris Williamson. Since then, I've heard other things about Stephen Bartlett's business practices, which may or may not be true, may or may not be valid may or not be integral to what he actually does. I don't know. Yes, maybe all, not all worth it. I don't want a defamation lawsuit from Stephen Bartlett. He will, it's, he will all win. This stuff goes, all this stuff goes beyond know. my head, right? You know, yeah. It's this headline reading and going, anyone would go look at that and go, ooh, maybe he's a bit of a snow coal salesman. I don't know enough about fucking business to know if, what, what standard and, practice and, and, what, and I right? think I think snow coal salesman is definitely an accurate term of Stephen Bartlett. He's un... Like, I don't even know the word you'd use. Yeah. He is so yeah. obviously successful. Right, like, Mate, like the guy yeah. is social chain was unbelievable. Yeah. He's the youngest person to ever be a dragon on Dragon's Den. I know that doesn't mean anything, but it yeah. does mean something because they get multi millionaires on there, and he is my age and doing it. You don't right? get that big and Unreal. That successful completely shitting on people. You don't. He absolutely, right? And he absolutely isn't. No, not at all. Not at all. And that, that, that's what I was bringing it back to is based on those two things, those two factors, I would say Chris Williamson is a person with more integrity. And so what I was going to do was bring some examples up of their YouTube channels. And I got Stephen Barler's YouTube channel up and there's all the headlines. Calories are a lie. Calories are a myth. Oh, hold this thought. Hold oh, this thought because I oh. literally I had a quiz ready for you. And you might you might Ooh. actually have seen all these now because you've done exactly the same thing. This is, this is so what this I might was be. Say. But but let's see if you can work it out. Which one is um, Williamson and which one is Bartlett? And, and I've and I've and I've made these fitness related, right? Cool. I cool. made it fitness related so they so mm. we can have like for like comparisons. Um, mm. So the first one, strategies for living longer. <sighs> I'm going to say this Bartlett. It's Williamson. Fuck, cunt. <laughs> now, this is what I, I said. <laughs> I, and I think, I, think, I think these are all obvious. Mm. We'll see if that's true. Okay. Avoid these four foods. Motherfucker. Mm. Now I'm veering. I'm veering towards Williamson. <laughs> you think, avoid these four foods. Avoid these four foods. I'm going I'm to say Williamson. Bartlett. No, Bartlett. See? See? Next one. This food is killing you. Oh. It's going to be Williamson. Isn't it? <laughs> That's Bartlett. <laughs> That's doing very well here. 
<laughs> this See? is the science of fat loss. Mm. Roy uh, Williamson. That's Williamson. That's Ben Carpenter. I haven't listened to that yet, but nice. I will do. Nice. Um, transform how your body moves. <sighs> so I'd maybe go. I'd maybe go for Williamson. Williamson, that's Kelly Starrett, another one on my to-do list. Oh, was it? Cool, cool. They're lying about calories. That's got to be the Bartlett one. That's it's Bartlett, be. right? That was, uh, yeah. mm. oh, um, I can't remember the name of the guy, but yes. Yeah. Um, calories are a total lie. Bartlett. Bartlett, that's Tim Spector. And so the reason why I did that mm. is because when you look at these things, like avoid these four foods, these four foods are going to be bad. That's the headline. This food is killing you. Your calories are lying. Calories are a total lie. Like, it's all this stuff is like demonizing stuff, where it's like strategies for living longer. That grabs my attention just as much yeah. as the Bartler headlines, but yeah. at no point is it saying this one food will make you live to 90. Yeah. Like it's, 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 we hear some things to potentially make you live longer. Here's transform how your body moves. It's not going one stretch to get your leg behind your head. It is transform <laughs> how your body moves. The science of fat loss. Like, yeah. like they're not, they're, they're, click, they're not clickbaiting the same way. They are, they are not bridging you in with a big claim. It is mm. a bold headline of what the show is about. Mm. But they're both striking, but totally yeah, different it. in the message that is coming across. Mm. They're both really playing that YouTube algorithm game perfectly. Absolutely mm. perfectly. Because that's what's going to get the views and it's just the nature of the beast, right? doesn't mean necessarily one is worse than the other. So that's what I was going to say is when I then looked and realized, hang on, Williamson, some of these Williamson titles are, are kind of clickbaity as well. Just playing the game like I would do with my stuff as well. So then what I did was I looked at, I wanted to get an example of someone who is as big, if not bigger, that's not doing that. And Rogan, you go on Rogan's YouTube where they show the clips, obviously not the whole podcast. You go on Rogan's YouTube and it literally just explains what's happening. Ric Flair talks about how he gets off Xanax. This guest talks about how he gets off this, or not mm. gets off, but did this. So-and-so talks about being 3,000 foot up in upper mountain in a thunderstorm. It's not like the Ric Flair one. It's not the super secret way to guarantee you get off drug addiction or anything like that. It's literally, it just explains who it is and what they're talking about in that clip. So there's no clickbait element to it whatsoever, but it's still really, really compelling. Other people may argue that. Other people may not find those clips compelling to or the head. Yeah, well, I don't. I don't find Chris Williams being very clickbaity. I find them striking. I find them eye catching, mm. but they're never they're never misleading. Like the latest no. fitness one with Bartler was about like cardio doesn't cause weight loss. It's yeah. it's a bold and it's a it's a non. It's deliberately confrontational. Yes, because and, and this is this is the reason the reason why I use the word integrity here rather than clickbait as the title for this podcast is because the Tim Spector one was the first one. And that went viral of, of people disliking it. Right. And instead of then getting someone on the other side, let's say we got a Ben Carpenter or Elaine Norton or a Mike Isertel or insert person here. What we then got and bear in mind, Stephen Bartlett's had James Smith on the show. Bear in mind in the interactive journal that um, Stephen Bartlett's selling, which, by the way, looks unbelievable, overpriced, but unbelievably good. Have you seen this thing? It's a journal, right? So you have your health, your fitness, your business journals. And Stephen Bartlett's got all some of the experts, from not all from the podcast, but experts that he trusts and believes in. And there's a QR code on every page that gives okay. you a little video about, like, here's some business tips or here's some fitness tips. Oh, okay. That's cool. It's a brilliant idea, right? Yeah. But the business person is Diren Cartel. Now, Stiren needs up 24-7, calories in versus calories out, right? That, that sure. is essentially what it is. Yeah. And again, I'm, yeah. I'm not pro only calories in, calories out narrative either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I like a lot of what Tim Spector says. Sure. I think people are polarizing for the sake of being polarizing or because they don't know enough. But like, you, don't, you can see this is not necessarily what he believes in. You've got a controversial guy on. He was controversial. We've got, got eyes on the podcast. The, there's no publicity, like, you know, there's no such thing as bad publicity. Mm. And then instead of getting an alternative thing to play devil's advocate, he went, well, this yeah. works. Calories are lies. Cardio doesn't mm. work. These four foods are killing you. He just doubled down on the stuff where it's like, is this about actually giving the audience what he wants and yeah. put, having conversation that he wants to have? 
Or is this, and is it him, is his editing team, is it a production company? He has a massive team, right? So I'm not putting all the blame on Steven necessarily, even though he is no, the, the so. main driving force. It, but it, it seems like it's less about the people that are listening now and more what's going to get eyes, what's going to get headlines, yeah. what's going to drive traffic. Yeah. Yeah. And he doesn't mind I... if a few people drop off along the way as long as more are coming in. No. Whereas I get the opinion Williamson wants to keep his core audience and doesn't want to insult their intelligence. The biggest thing, the biggest thing that annoyed me out of it is okay. If you look at Rogan, he's having, he's full on having a conversation. It's not necessarily directly an interview, which is more what modern wisdom and diary CEO can turn into. He's like just chatting. But if there's something he thinks is bullshit, he calls it out there and then, right? Hmm. Calls it. No matter out. who he's, the guest is, no matter who it is, no matter how <laughs> close he is to them, and he's got Jamie there to bring stuff up as well. You look at. Chris Williamson, he's clearly already prepared for every single guest that comes on to the point where he adds to the conversation hmm. a lot of the time, the majority of the time. He's adding to that conversation. And I think he Whereas, still kind of calls out people, but not in the same way that Joe yeah, Rogan does. Yeah, he's, he, he is, he's mm. wonderful at mm. disagreeing without mm. taking away from the point. Yeah. This is my point. This is what I feel, what you agree with. He's, he has this wonderful way of putting in his own stamp on things without yeah. coming across confrontation. Yeah. Whereas you've got on Bartlett, you've got, I, I believe it was the Tim Spector episode where he wasn't just talking about calories. He was saying that training with weights or exercise is a waste of time as well. And you've got, if that was Rogan, Geezer would be, be torn a new one. If that was Williamson, I'm pretty sure he'd have a, a ton of references to disagree. On Stephen Bartlett, Stephen Bartlett goes, God, it's so confusing, isn't it? But no, it's not. You know this. You're in phenomenal shape yourself. You exercise. You obviously eat well. Whether you eat fuel or not, I don't know. But you obviously eat right. And you exercise. And you look after yourself. And you're in phenomenal shape for the, re for the very reasons that this guy opposite you is saying don't actually exist or don't matter or are overrated and all these things. Man, that's your opportunity to have a debate. To like push back a little bit. One thing I thought was when he was talking about artificial sweeteners and how bad they are and he was talking about his Diet oh. Cokes and it was like, and then all of a sudden it, went, it did a fade out and it comes back. What like what what one 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 sec one second he goes and he cuts it goes one second. Huel will been a sponsor for this podcast for a lot a long time. And I'm like, there's artificial sweeteners in Huel. Fucker, <laughs> you know? you motherfucker. Yeah, and like uh. and and again, I like Huel. Hmm. I think I think I think yeah. they're a good company. I think their products are great. But yeah. It, 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 it's just it's just the very see-through disingenuousness of it. And, and, and I think the, it's, it's not helped by the way those trailers are cut up. And I think, the, no, I think that's the biggest issue, right? But is the problem necessarily? It seems, it, and I'm, I, I'm not a person that say podcasts should sustain in their lane. Like, because otherwise, I would have to have this podcast be 100% solely fitness. And I absolutely don't want to do that, right? I want to expand and broaden my horizons. So Stephen Barlow is within all rights of talking about health and fitness and things that interest him in the same way that modern wisdom has changed over the time and mm. Rogan has changed over time and things like this. But it's the problem when he, his, his method of getting the show out there is very sensationalized, edited, clickbaity. Here's the bits that are going to caption you. Is when that's his own realm, he can do that tactfully because he understands where those buttons are going to be pushed. Mm. Whereas when it's the fitness realm, he doesn't know exactly the line because because mm. he's always had trailers like this, but they've never bugged me. And maybe it's because it's closer to home, and I understand Probably, the yeah. bullshit. Okay. And maybe a businessman doesn't like the business episodes, but on the business stuff, I feel like. It's very much a, this is the way I made a hundred million pounds in my back. Like in like, I, um, like the one was one of the guys from Dragon's Den. It was like, um, like a hundred million pound business with, with work-life balance or something like that. Right. Very boom, clickbaity article, but it was more like Williamson's in the sense of, well, that's what he did. Like, mm, mm. Yeah, like no arguments. No. Whereas these are, and I think if he just did the Tim Spector one and then maybe did a different fitness guy, then went back to some business, I don't think it would have bothered me at all. But yeah. it's because he doubled. Mm. He doubled That's, down. Like, the, the biggest problem I have is, okay, so 
cut your trailer up in whatever ways gets people in whatever way gets people's eyes on your show so they'll listen to your podcast cool i get it you get more listeners you increase your following it drives revenue up fair enough there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing that but we're in this culture now where people will take headlines as information and it might be you know and it might be validity to me sitting here and saying Stephen Bartlett shouldn't do that but we see this in every fucking world. Well, that's the news. That's the news. That's the media in one. People don't have to read the whole headline and they don't necessarily have to know the sources or even read the sources. They just need the headline in the first paragraph. And that's how they form their opinion and their view of the world and their education based off of that. So it's just playing the same game that that, that, that is the cycle that the world moves in anyway. I think, I think the to end this show... I think we've talked about integrity Mm. and I think it's important that we also show our own integrity here Mm. and make sure that we're holding ourselves to the same standard as these guys. And I appreciate when I say this, that this is mainly me because I write the headlines, (laughs) but let's judge my own (laughs) headlines here. Let's let's finish this show by saying integrity is on a spectrum. Yeah, yeah, exactly. (laughs) And then when we are hovering above the spectrum and can drop in when we like (laughs) But on the whole, there are a mm. few that are coming to mind that maybe I've, I've, I've with a headline, mm. not with the show, because sure. I think we're very fair and balanced on the show. I don't think we have we have opinions, but I think we always mm. play devil's advocate to our own opinions. So I think the show is generally very good, and I don't think our trailers are misleading. You know, which is this mm. is I deliberately try not to, uh, and my editor now tries not to. But low carb, low calorie, top tips. I think that's fair. That's right. Will AI change the fitness industry? It's a question. I'm not saying AI will destroy your life. Yeah, exactly. Best workouts for getting in shape? Mm, Yeah, a little. Close. Close. I did cross bodybuilding. Our biggest successes and failures? I think that's fine. Uh, Our hardest workouts? Again, us. Um, How to make your 2023 habits stick? I think that's fair from what the guess was. Uh, Let's go back to some of our ones. Um, do calories matter? Again, a question. Sure. Question. Um, the, what is the greatest Christmas movie? Just facts. It's Die Hard. So, like, um, but that's how it could have been. What's the greatest Christmas Christmas movie? We discuss it. We didn't yeah. just put Die Hard is the greatest, or this is the you know. I think that would get a pass. In defense yeah. of the Liver King, mm. I think that's fair. I think it's just putting a devil's advocate to it. Right. Yeah. Um, let's talk steroids. Okay. BS fitness trends. And we're going back now. Greatest horror movie. Um, what if we ran the world? But there is one coming that I do think dumb shit PTs do. Has fem no, but even this has feminism gone too far? Again, a question. It's, it's a not question. We're not saying we're not exactly in the same way yeah. that our next episode. Uh, that will, well, we've already recorded it at this point, but the next episode that will go that will go out of us is: uh, Does veganism have an agenda? Mm. I mean, that's the closest I think we've ever <laughs> ever it's done. That's that, the is, that is the closest. <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I I think I think the big thing here is I'd like I'd like to think, and, and, and who knows? Like if 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 I manage to get this show out to a lot of people, I become Chris Williamson in size, and we're, we're still doing this in a on a Thursday or whatever day we do it on when we, when I move back to the UK, like I'd like to think that if we all of a sudden have a viral video, we just don't double down to try and piss off that section of the audience. Like if we make a trans yeah. video, like an anti-trans video, and then loads of trans activists start slagging us off and it gets us really big. I do want to make like 20 trans episodes <laughs> slamming the trans people going, yeah, well, let's just piss of them off. Cause that will get eyes. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's what he's kind of doing to a lot of the fitness industry. It's like, it, rather than having let's talk gut health or is the gut affecting your brain? Like that calories are a lie could have been, is the gut affecting your weight loss? Or has your weight loss stalled because of the gut? Or is the gut why you're depressed? Like all these are like clickbaity titles that aren't mm. deceiving. Yeah. And that's where I think the fine line between the two shows have. That's the thing, right? 
You, I mean, if you think we have one clip go semi-viral, which was... Was it UFOs or the ghost? It was one of the two. You, know, you manifested just, a ghost. Manifested a ghost, right? And then, yeah, of course, you could have got tons of other people on talking about their ghost experiences. We could have turned this into a paranormal podcast, which we never would have fucking done anyway, because it would have got two episodes in and then we would have quit because we've got nothing else to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> we should do another one, though. Let's do another paranormal. I, I, Let me I, think of what's happened recently. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm not against the idea of going to where you manifest the ghost with a couple of road mics and a camera. Hell yeah. And a, well, and a, bring my mate in his, his, um, his uh, meditative binaural beats. Yes. Well. See yeah. we can film it. Film, film us trying to manifest a ghost. See if we can catch anything on camera. Or like find the most haunted places in the UK and do a bit of podcast Hell episode. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's not a bad idea. Find That's the most haunted place in the UK idea. and do a podcast yeah. in there. Chat cool. about fitness. Chat about fitness. <laughs> fitness for ghosts. This yeah. is the best exercise to walk through walls. Well, to be honest, I, I don't think the ghosts are very heavy. I don't think they need to lose any weight. <laughs> they can float. Oh, my oh, God. There's yeah. so many ideas. Wow. There's so many ideas. We've got that. We've got the game of life, which I definitely want to do, by the way. Um, fitness challenges. We've got a bunch of stuff. So, so the closing statement is for people listening to this and have gotten this far, stay tuned. The big news from my camp is that my partner has now got a job i'm going to be moving back to the uk and i'm going to be dedicating more time to the show when i do so stay tuned to this if you if you enjoy the show please share the more people we can get uh, eyes on the show the more listens the more downloads the more views on youtube the better the guests can get and the more of these wacky ideas that me and rob can have can come into reality um but for people who want to follow rob and getting back to the 10k mark because the bots are now leaving <laughs> How Bastards. can he get you back? How, where can oh, he find you to get you back to 10K? I said I didn't care about the vanity metrics. I, I do. I really do. That's pissed me off. That is. So come see me on Fat Loss Fast Lane. That's where I'm the most interactive um, on, in, in all realms, really. So, yeah, Fat Loss Fast Lane on Instagram is probably your best bet. I do want to come say hi on Twitter because I'm trying to get a bit more, a uh, bit back into it there because I do like the text format. I don't always want to appear on video. Um, then find me. Well, I think it's just my name on Twitter. Rob Geary with two Bs. Don't forget that. The amount of people that email me with a single B. And I do sometimes wonder, like when you're replying, do you think I'm spelling my own name wrong? And you're just too, <laughs> you're too scared to say anything. So you just put one B. It's kind of rude, people. So yeah, two Bs, Rob Geary on Twitter. But yeah, Fat Loss Fast Lane on Instagram is probably your best bet. I also, I also did it on the first episode of the show, on the first ever thumbnail we did. Everyone's done it. Everyone's done it once. Everyone. It's all good. But they only ever do it. <laughs> Right, man. <laughs> Never again. Right, man. Pleasure as always, man. Catch you next week.